What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. I'm sure Chantal will be going live shortly, but I wanted to cover her final travel vlog, clearly. It starts with a hameo. We then get weeks-old footage of her picking out hijabs, offering that the ones she has were worn out and she needed new ones. We also, though, have some context that all of these are now left behind, and it's really odd to see this footage with the context of she's not going back but knowing that in the moment of filming it, there were really no plans to leave because when she got back to Canada, she bought a whole new wardrobe. And leaving this in kind of just reminds us that there's something off. I know she was just trying to add filler to elongate a video, but something isn't right about this. Whether it's an issue with the visa, whether it's an issue with the policy, she clearly was not in line to leave and then all of a sudden abruptly had to get back to Canada. And I think as you see this trip play out, that becomes more and more obvious. She also literally puts a photo of them from Thailand against the sofa and leans it on the wall. You know, this kind of scene setting, as if they had photos of them all around, is just very odd. You know, people don't do this. If you have a photo of each other as a couple and it's on the wall, that's fine. And that's perfectly normal. Taking a photo and sitting it on top of the sofa to lean against the wall so you can film yourself while appearing that there's a photo of the two of you that isn't even hanging up in the background, odd. We get driving B-roll where she talks about her anxiety before seeing her in the parking lot as Sala gets the last infamous side shots, and they basically go through the airport. She talks about the economy flight. Unlike last time, though, we don't see Sala waving. We don't see any embrace. We just hear him laugh as he holds her camera. We then cut to a close-up of her walking to buy water. She's easily distracted by candy. You as a viewer will be easily distracted by her heavy breathing. She said she buys lots of liquids at airports because she gets hot walking around. And again, totally abnormal. It should show her. She's done nothing to take her health seriously to the point that she can't even walk through an airport. We get B-roll out the plane window where she complains about the amenities from the dates to the size of the TV to what she didn't feel was adequate air vents that led to her being hot the whole flight. She shows the sandwich that got her sick and the person's hand sitting beside her. And despite being diabetic, she accepts the complimentary chocolate at the end of the first flight. She then complains about the terminal bus. It's almost like she fails to understand some things are made for function over comfort. The purpose of this bus is to move people in an airport from one point to another. It's generally less than 10 minutes. They don't need to install fans. They don't need to put in sofa-like seats. They don't need a TV, Chantal. It's commuting. The bus serves its purpose. And she continues these complaints throughout the Germany airport. She acts like travel is this monumental thing that requires days of preparation, days of recovery, like it's this massive endeavor that no one else even thinks of doing. Chantal, travel is common. People travel for work, never give it a second thought. Every single day, someone takes these trips, and while you make them out to be some daunting task, it again speaks to your health. You're wearing compression socks that you believe are going to prevent, not just reduce, but swelling in blood clots. When you can't walk through an airport, you have issues that need to be seriously addressed. And the fact that you came back to drink gravy in your car says a lot. And we're going to talk about your food choices in a moment and the timing of those choices. But she's much happier with Air Canada because, and this is her words, the gut room is so much better. The screens are so much bigger. We then see more juice and a sandwich with chips after she lands, and she has clearly zero respect for her fast, for the halal options. She is sitting here, dressed as a Muslim. She then instantly cuts to herself and says, people are looking at me weird. Yes, Chantal, they are. Just as someone would look at someone dressed as Santa walking through an airport in the middle of April, you are dressed as a Muslim openly breaking one of the most sacred holidays, then even having the audacity to say bismillah while you stuff low-quality airport food in your face. You were also using the name Foodie Beauty and then creating a dialogue about the amount of mayonnaise on a pre-made airport grab-and-go sandwich. 
just like the bus that you were so concerned about, Chantal. It is airport food. It is meant to serve a purpose. It is a grab-and-go sandwich. It is meant to sustain you from one meal to the next. It is not meant to be this gourmet, best-ever sandwich. It's like you don't understand the purpose of convenience items. She then goes over the story of the guy who spilled wine on her, yet never gives his perspective. Someone that, again, these are her words, constantly said, I'm getting two seats the next time I fly, even though I'm flying in a class outside of coach, outside of economy, where the seats are bigger, I'm still having issues. Yet here you are in the smallest seats in the plane, the most restricted area of the plane, in one seat, and you are complaining about others encroaching on you when it's very likely you were encroaching on them. She talks about how old she looks while waiting for a taxi, the Kia that obviously needed maintenance, and the first thing she does is go to a drive through and gets Diet Cola. She said she's not going to worry about halal options, like we didn't understand that from the beginning of this video. She drives down the long road. We see her stop for another non-halal, non-fasting meal. So just to put some perspective to this, she's at the airport. She needs a sandwich while waiting outside. She leaves the airport. She needs to stop and get fast food. And then once she gets home, she has to stop and get something to eat in a restaurant. Again, Chantal, it is not normal. People generally, from what my experiences are, try to buy as little in the airport as possible because the expense of those items is clearly insane. Once you leave the airport, perhaps you stop and get something small just to kind of hold you over till you get back home, till you get to your destination, and then maybe you settle in, you order something, you go out. If you're home, maybe you make something. You actually take this opportunity to buy three separate meals, sandwich and chips, sandwich and onion rings, and then obviously a meal with gravy. Dressed as a Muslim during Ramadan, concerned and not understanding why people are looking at you while you're eating. You can sit there and say that, oh, it's a medical issue. Oh, I have to have it with my medicine. There was no medicine shown in this video. And also, I have a really hard time believing now that you were fasting before, that it was anything other than performative and dramatics and theatrics. I also have an even harder time thinking that you were following OMAD when you claimed you were because we can see you're incapable of simply leaving one place, driving to another place, and not considering stopping to eat in the process when honestly, this is what's created a majority of the issues that you're facing in your life. This is why people tell you Canada may not be the best place for you because you clearly lack any self-control. And when you had little to no control in Kuwait, stuck in an apartment, couldn't read the language, you were still finding ways to order copious amounts of food, gain weight in the process. And now apparently you're going to be back with zero restrictions, zero concerns about halal options or Ramadan when before you were restricted by the culture and country you were in. I can't see this getting to a better place. I'm going to leave you with the top comments from the last video. I appreciate you and all the support you've given me so far this week. I will be back as soon as I can with more commentary.